Hello everybody, my name is Hofstadter, and I'll be showing you how the logistics system works in Gary Griffey's War in the West. For this um, tutorial, I'll learn about the West Wall scenario, which is essentially um, a, a, a complete mess of logistics. It's it's really the best one out scenario out of the lot if you want to fiddle with the logistics system and learn how it works. Now. First off, let's talk about how the supply grid works. At the very top of the list, supply is produced in <clears throat> national hubs. Liverpool is one of these, I think, and there's probably a whole bunch here somewhere. Either way, it's produced down up here, brought down via rail links. These have to be fixed to the ports down here. These have to be fixed as well and they're transported to other ports along the network. For instance, this would probably go over to here. From the port, it'll transport over through <clears throat> a rail system again and into depots. I, you can press the end button to examine your depots. From here, um, supply will travel out via trucks to your army groups. These army groups will then transfer the supply over to their cores, which will transfer over to their units. That is a very simple method of um, how it works. Let's take a talk about the rail system a little bit more in depth now. Now, when I press the end key, it also brought up, it also highlighted, highlighted all the rails here. Now, the rails will come in three different colors green, yellow, and red. Supply is determined by freight, which is measured in tonnage. As the more tr um, freight passes through the rails, the more stress it puts on a single system. And eventually this will lead to a penalty and change the color to yellow. This will affect how much freight is passed through the area because the rail network is getting completely jammed up by trains. You alleviate this by setting up more rail systems over to one area. For instance, let's say I have a depot here. If I only had this rail system going, assuming it was fixed up, this would probably have a high amount of stress. However, if I fixed up this system, down here, up, up there, that way, freight will be evenly split up and head to there. Let's talk about what role the depots play. Depots are hubs for all of your supply networks, and... <clears throat> in War in the West, I mean War in the East, your supply essentially travelled out of the last functioning railhead, which is just the rail, which is the last functioning hex. But in here it's a combination of that and depots, but it is mainly focused on depots. As I said, trucks come from, de come from Army Group Headquarters and into the de de depots and it's supplied out to the um, core and into the units. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, not used to talking this much. Uh, what's next? Now, these triangles here are, are the priority of the depots. That means that during the logistics phase, uh, when you end the turn, the computer will automatically dictate how much supply goes to a depot based on its priority. Zero is where it gets no supply whatsoever. It is out of the question. One is the next lowest, and four is the highest, and all the depot will be concentrated towards fours. In the game, you want the most heavily fought fighting of your units, or where you want the most units to push, you want to set up a depot at the front line behind them, and put an army group headquarters at that depot. For instance, I could put him over here, but no, I can't do that because he'll be out of supply. I could put one there, or here if there is, if there is a depot, is there? Ah yes. You can also create... <clears throat> I'll get back, to that, get back to that in a second. Um, your... how many trucks are dictated by... by 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 the... the, the, the <clears throat> that, that can go out. It's dictated by your motor pool, which is up here. I don't really know that much about that's a little bit too mathematical for me. Um, let's just... I'm working off this based on the manual. I'm trying to do um, something that's a little bit more comprehensive. <clears throat> so just give me a second to figure out where I am up to. Let's talk about supply states now. 
pretty simple stuff. Um, just supplies dictated by how far a unit is away from its. This is determined by. Let's see now. Oh well, since. Never mind that. Ignore that for a second. Units that are outlined in red are considered out of supply. What this means, and especially this is especially important for motor core, is that they won't get as much fuel, general supply, wait, fuel, general supply, and ammunition. This is this is reflected in their combat value and the amount of movement points that they have. But this fuel is more imperative for your armor points, especially if you want to form a a, a spearhead to push through. But it's also important. But for your infantry, you make sh you want to make sure they they are heavily supplied, because if they don't get much, they'll have a lower combat rating. Now. <clears throat> Just let me see where I am up to. Tracing receiving supply. Okay, so is there, there is an MP cost. Um, basically, some, it isn't that important, but basically you can see the dictate how if your units are in supply or out by the blue line. So I won't go too much into the mathematics of that, but it's, <clears throat> it's something like 25 movement points for here to there, or 50 from here to here. Not really sure about that. Hmm, what next? Okay, let's see, look around, what is happening in this scenario. The objectives are up here. Let's take a look at what, um, obviously these units up here seem to be the highest in supply. This is because they have two Depot 4 ratings here, and the three up there. Which is supplied by the ports coming here, and moving up to here. So these guys are obviously the most in supply because trucks are coming out to that unit and well I shouldn't have moved that one over there. But it's best to have your these ones at uh, your army group level I think it's an army group at least on these depots so that way less trucks will be brought out because the trucks will come out from there and then to there. So that's probably not the smartest move. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. But, um... Or alternatively, you could put them there, but that will put them out of supply. So you basically want to have a good median, uh, median, I think. Probably wrong. Obviously, these guys are pretty heavily out of supply. Well, not so out, but not very well. Because the depot over here it's not the very best because this is only a supply rating of two so therefore you have to look back at how much supply is getting to the back lines before they get to this isn't getting much supply here and it's being transferred down to there and to there so this is only getting a minuscule amount the top priority from here so if you want to form and get put all of your supply into one area you want to <clears throat> say, put say if there was a series of depots along here, you want to rank them in such a way that the supply is completely arranged and goes up this way, while ignoring it coming from this way. So you want to set these lower. Say you want to set, set this as two and this is one. That way, more will go over here and less over here. It's pretty simple stuff. As you can see, these guys are seven levels of fucked. Nothing is, yeah, pretty much no supply is getting over there. Now, fixing a rail to get them in supply is pretty simple. You click on a rail group service and click on the RRC button, which will remove a movement point. And you simply keep doing this. One movement point to move and one movement point to fix a rail. Now, because I've done this, in the next turn this should be in supply. It should be getting a little bit more. This one is still in supply. That's coming over here. As I said, you can press up. Oh, to switch uh, to switch uh, depot priorities, you click where a depot is, click on priority, and then set a number. To create a depot, 
you want to click up here, or any, anywhere really, the name, and create it. <clears throat> now, one of the most important things in creating Depot is the rail yards. You can check the status of a rail yard by looking at this. The more heavy the rail yard is in there, the more freight will be transported out. Let's look at Antwerp. As you can see, this has five rail yards in it. And this is reflected in the amount of freight shipping capacity in this black bar here. If we look at Lil. Oh wait, that has five. That has five rail yards, but they're at 60% damage, so I think that is a reflection on it. No, okay, that that's a little bit. It's not really exp that bit is explained in the manual very well. Now. Oh, replacements. Replacements um, are also dicted by dictated by your supply network. The best way to determine how how to um, set up the supply is going into your unit. Um, supply details? No. Uh, it's something to do with the TOE, Table of Organization and Equipment, but I don't really use that that much. You can probably just check it out in the Commander's Report, I think. Let me just find it. Um, TOE. You know, let's end the turn and see what's going on with the supplies. Because it doesn't actually have any supply details up in its uh, in the in that box yet. <clears throat> I'm not actually gonna play through the scenario, I'm just trying to show logistics and how it works. At, at its most basic level. I don't claim to be an expert on this game, let me just say that right now. Let's just wait for it to do its thing. This one got oh good. I'll put, probably put just a, uh, a little note in the video just saying to skip from this point to another point just to make it simpler so you don't have to watch the scrap. I don't really know how to edit videos yet. probably see at the bottom here that's or, or that already organized to its um <clears throat> logistics based on the priority level. Alright, let's ignore that. Ignore that. Let's see what happens. Right click, supply details. Since these guys are out of supply because I am a twit, we can look at their supply supply details received. They only received 16 this amount of supply because really not that much. They were out of... <clears throat> and let's compare. How much did these guys get? Yep, they got a bit more supply than those ones, than these guys here. Now I was just reading through the manual, and a good tip is to place army, H army and high HQs up on port hexes. So up there because they would draw a lot of supply to pass out to the units. Hmm. Let me just go back to see if I can't. Oh my god. 
There it is, there it is. Wait, let it go. Okay, table of equipment. Table of equipment basically determines how much... <clears throat> uh, um, how much of a certain unit is in the force. So let's say... Um, the TRE of a of infantry in one unit is like 5,000 men. It adds 100%. It's 100% of its TRE has 5,000 men. But if it's, it adds 50%, it has 2,500. Now, in replacement segments, there is a replacement segment dictated by priority of your units that say how much replacements are given back. Now, if you don't want a unit to receive replacements, you can go into here and set that. In the next phase, it would only receive 50% of its next TOE because it's lower in priority. Now in regards to priorities of units in that need the one depot, it's pretty simple. You just go up here and check the supply priority and change it. Yep. So that means this guy would have more supply, more priority over this one if I set the four. Yep, he's got three, so if I set this four, he'll have more of a chance to get supply and these units will be get more supply other over these ones. This is very important if you want to um, dictate where you want to attack, obviously. Now, let's look. Another useful one for showing supply is pressing the 8 key. Now, blue lines represent port to port freight transport. As I repaired these two here, oh, fuck's sake. These blue lines weren't that would not be there in the last turn, but since I repaired them, these are now receiving freight. Problem is, the rail line is completely screwed, so that only trucks are dictating how that how far they go. The longer the line, the higher the chances is that a rail line is bringing out its bringing out the. Yep, there you go. As I ended the turn, it's showing how bad the supply segment is. Because this one is decent, because there's still a fair few mass. Let's get rid of that. Fair few amount of rail lines going up here. But not so much down here. Um, let's see what else. Yep, and these are quite stressed. Basically, as I said before, the longer the line, the, chance, the higher the chances is that it's being transported by rail. If it's short, chances are it's being transported by trucks. Because of this, because of trucks, as I said before, you want to determine where to put your HQs. So, if I wanted to get the highest amount of supply, I would, assuming the rail network is good, I will put him up here and change these to some, the um, priority 4. That way all the supply, or most of it, would be funneled through to him and then funneled through to these units. Now, I think I'm going to stop here. And I hope you learnt something about um, how logistics works. If you had any questions or comments, please leave a comment and I will try to answer it. Thank you. For